Off and on since the 1970s, I assume most of you have heard about Lyme disease. You know, ticks, mostly on the East Coast, not that big a deal. But a few years ago, some friends of mine shared a sad and upsetting story of their daughter's long misdiagnosed and severely debilitating battle, not only with the disease, but with the medical establishment's positions and attitudes about it. Having myself co-written a book about the relaxing properties of the South Pacific herb kava as an alternative to sleeping pills and tranquilizers, only to see the pharmaceutical industry and regulators gang up and badmouth that natural supplement, I was not surprised by what I heard. So, when I uh, was uh, asked to see if I was interested in doing a show on Under Our Skin, a film about Lyme disease opening in L.A. Friday night, uh, this coming Friday, June 26th, I uh, definitely wanted to spread the word. Lyme disease is one of the most misunderstood and controversial illnesses of our time. It's difficult to test accurately, with as many as 50% false negatives on the standard blood tests. So tens of thousands of people go undiagnosed or misdiagnosed with such conditions as fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, autism, uh, MS, ALS. The Centers for Disease Control admits, actually, that perhaps more than 200,000 people may acquire Lyme disease each year. And that's a number, if you listen to it, 200,000 that's greater than AIDS, West Nile virus, and avian flu combined. Yet the medical establishment, under the influence of the insurance industry, has stated that the disease is easily detectable and treatable, and that chronic Lyme is some other unrecognized syndrome or a completely psychosomatic disorder. Uh, Numerous uh, patients uh, say that they were told, it's all in your head, you should see a psychiatrist, etc. So I'm going to open up talking with Andy Abrahams Wilson, Uh, He is the producer, director, cameraman of Under Our Skin. Then I'm going to bring in Mandy Hughes, a patient who went misdiagnosed for years. Uh, Dr. Richard Horowitz, who is uh, one of the uh, uh, doctors who is literate about uh, about Lyme disease and who is the uh, current president of the International Lyme and Associated Disease Education Foundation um, and has been... uh, uh, president-elect and vice president of the International Lyme and Associated Diseases Society, which are some of the folks who are um, on the more vigilant end of this whole Lyme disease within medicine. Um, and uh, finally, I will bring in Lorraine Johnson. She's the CEO of the California Lyme Disease Association, uh, which is a big player nationally on the issue. And there's some very interesting things happening um, in terms of science, in terms of treatment, and actually in terms of uh, legally trying to uh, overcome some of the obstacles that have stood in the way uh, in the past few years. Uh, depending ha- on how things go, I may even take some callers if that's so. I will tell you the number uh, when we open up the lines, and if you want to join the conversation, go ahead. I I say that because when I put out my weekly announcement, which I do uh, on Tuesday night, I mean on Monday nights, telling you who's going to be on and what we're going to talk about, uh, by this morning I already had several emails from friends and associates or folks on that list who said, oh, glad you're dealing with this. I've had it for 10 years. I've had it for 20 years, et cetera, et cetera. So it – and – uh, I will confess that that doesn't happen every show, you know, that people are, are jumping on the topic quite that quickly. On Free Forum, we explore the lives, the work, the ideas of individuals that I suspect have pieces of the puzzle of a world that just might work. We look at new, innovative, and provocative approaches to business, environment, health, science, politics, media, culture, all based on the fact that I believe we can do better, and I want to find out how. Uh, Andy Abrahams Wilson studied journalism and anthropology at Northwestern and received an MA from USC in visual anthropology and film. He's an Emmy nominated producer and director of creative nonfiction films, including HBO's Bubble Lee and Me and Sundance Channel's Hope is the Thing with Feathers. Welcome, Andy Abrahams Wilson, to KPFK and Free Forum. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay. Um, I like listeners to get a feel for the people behind the work and the ideas that we talk about. So, uh, just quickly, you studied journalism and anthropology. What turned you to film? Well, uh, yeah, quickly I, I found that uh, journalism uh, was not a way to go deep into a story. And so then I went into cultural anthropology, which is which is which was a way to go deeply into stories and cultures. And then I, was in, I wanted to combine my interest in uh, 
um, visual media like photography, and I went to the only visual anthropology program in the country was at USC, and did half of my coursework in the film school. So sort of slowly migrated um, from journalism to anthropology to film. Okay, and, and that's that's where I stand. That today. is an interesting background. I appreciate that. What what led you to make this film? Well, I, I think it's it's fair to say that I was that I'm 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 a typical I was a typical viewer or, or uh, at when I first started it was it was basically accidental. Um, I didn't know much about Lyme disease. The only the only uh, all I knew about it was that my sister had had it years ago. She lives in upstate New York and. She was tired and achy, and that's what I knew, and that's what most people know about That's Lyme right. Disease. Um, I thought it was just limited to the Northeast, and it wasn't a very serious condition. And so it wasn't until a friend of mine here, I live in the San Francisco Bay Area, she got very ill, um, got worse and worse. She was diagnosed with MS and then ALS, which is basically a death sentence. ALS is Lou Gehrig's disease. Lou Gehrig's yeah. disease, and she... Um, she kept searching for answers, and she finally got a Lyme disease diagnosis and, and started a long road back to health. And so I was just shocked. I was shocked that Lyme disease could do that to you. I had no idea. And um, as I looked deeper into the issue, I saw that her story was repeated thousandfold and that there's, a, there's a, a whole segment of our society that's falling through the cracks because of this hidden epidemic that is being ignored. Okay, very good. Um, let me tell people, I'm Terry McNally, and I'm speaking about Lyme disease and the documentary about that called Under Our Skin. It opens in Los Angeles uh, this coming Friday and will open around the country over the next few weeks. Uh, and right now I'm speaking with the producer and director of that film, Andy Abrahams Wilson. Um, what, when, I mean, I, I've got sort of in, in a sense with a patient, a doctor, and a head of one of the uh, uh, big societies, people who actually may, you know, are, are the real experts on this, but you having come to it as I did um, w without that knowledge, what do you think people need to know? Well, first of all, people need to know that it is, it, that it is a very serious uh, illness. Um, that's the first thing, that it's much more rampant than we believe. You mentioned 200,000, but that number may be even over 300,000 now. Since last year, that 200,000 number was based on 2006 numbers, but um, the CDC estimates have increased, uh, I think, almost uh, 30 to 40 percent since then. Um, so the, the estimates from the CDC put it up to possibly over 300,000 a year. So we're talking about very, very big numbers here, and um, I think the other the other assumption or myth about Lyme disease is that it's not serious. And um, as, as I just told you about the story of my friend, it's very serious and it can be life-threatening as well. I wonder what would have happened to my friend if she did not finally get that Lyme disease diagnosis, if she stuck with the ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease diagnosis. She, she might not be here today, and that's true for some of the people in the film as well, especially Mandy Hughes, um, what would have happened if she had not finally gotten her, her Lyme disease diagnosis because she was going swiftly downhill. In her case, she had been diagnosed with MS. So it's very serious. And then there's also the question of transmission. How is it transmitted? The, um, the medical establishment believes it is only through a deer tick, an infected deer tick, but there is evidence that it's transmitted or can be transmitted from mother to child in utero, transplacentally, and this is, seems to be very common. And sexual transmission has not been ruled out. After all, it is a cousin of syphilis, mm -hmm. which is sexually transmitted, as we know. So, And then there's the, the question that it's the, the geographic, that it's only in the Northeast um, or even only in specific parts of the country. We found that it's in every state. Um, it is in every state of the country. It's on every continent in the world as well. It's not just a, 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 a problem in the United States. It's really worldwide. 